Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Ashley's Angling. We're going to be doing a little bit of a test today. We're going to be seeing which method's better in autumn. Is it the cage feeder or is it the method feeder? Just having a walk down to my swim, taking some of the stuff down. Fishing at high haze today. This is the peg I'm opting for today. Wind's blowing down into this corner. Really nice morning. It's, uh, it's chilly though. I think it's about five degrees at the minute. So it's really starting to get cold now. I'm gonna be fishing with natural baits. So I've got some maggots, got some worms. And on the method feeder, I'm gonna be using wafters. So that's another little test to see whether the natural baits will do better than the uh, artificial ones. But we'll see. Quite an interesting test. I'm interested to see which does better. I've got a feeling it's gonna be the cage feeder, but we'll see, who knows. Right, I'm going to go back to the car, get the rest of my stuff, and then I'll quickly run you through the setup. Right, okay, so I've just got myself sort of set up. Feeder chairs all set up. Got my bait table out. So we're going to be using bread on the method feeder as well as in the cage feeder. Then on the method feeder, we're gonna be using six mil and eight mil washed out wafters. Got some worms and maggots to try on the cage feeder. Um, rods are pre-set up. So just had to cut the video off there. One of my subscribers come and talk to me. Uh, only other fella on the lake today. So uh, what are the chances of that? <laughs> Um, so give him a, a Wesley's angling hat and he seems chuffed with that. So stay if you watch this video, just drop a comment down below and I'll pin it. But yeah, that's awesome. Dead nice guy. So, like I say, I'm just about to get set up. I need to put a hook link on, which will do. Just put a brolly up to uh, block some of the wind noise because uh, there is a bit of a breeze on today. Okie doke. Oh, so yeah, that's the first subscriber that I've seen on the bank. It was only a matter of time. Got to be careful when you're getting these pre-set up rods out. Because you have a habit of getting caught on stuff. There we go. So that's our cage feeder. That reel's not sounding too healthy. <laughs> right. So we need to get a hook link on that. I think I'm going to start at about a foot. So I've already set it up. If you want to know how to tie this feeder set up, there is a video on the channel, I'll put it in the description for you. It's, an, it's a tangle free feeder rig, so if you can see that, you can see how that boom section kicks it away from the feeder, and that's what you want. So I'm going to have about a foot long hook link on the uh, 7 pound hook link to a, probably about a size 14 hook. And my method feeder. Just using a banjo feeder because we don't want to put loads of feed out at this time of year 30 gram just trying out these um, cheap eBay banjo feeders at the minute and they seem to be working all right they've got a nice short stem on them the only thing I will say about them is they're a little bit shiny but they work out about £1.50 a feeder which is over a lot cheaper than a lot of these uh, other companies and you get everything with it you get the stem you get the insert so they're really good have a look at them i might even put a link for them in the description so you can have a nosy so i think they work out about one pound fifty each right let's get our hook link tied up for the feeder so we'll give ourselves plenty of line to work with there look for our size 14s size 12 might swap to a size 12 if um, we start using worm but i'll start off on size 14s i'm just going to tie it on with a knotless knot, then we'll loop to loop it with the end of the feeder rig. So back over the loops a couple of times and then back through the eye of the hook there. If I can do it, it's a bit windy. And we'll go probably about that, about a foot. And we're just going to tie a figure of eight loop knot in the end there. Does help if you've got a uh, baiting needle to pull it back through with. I don't, can't find mine. I 
Now, we're mostly fishing for silverfish today, but there are carp to about 18 pound in here and some decent sized F1s. Fingers crossed, we might get one of them. So all I'm gonna do now, I've tied that hook link up. Put my hook through the loop at the end of the, uh, the rig. And then back through that figure of eight loop knot that we've tied in the end of the hook link. And there we go. That's our feeder rig. Probably about a foot and a half with the boom section, which is perfect. I've already tied up some method feeder hook links. And these are just four inch hook links to a size 14. Again, with that Guru Engage seven pound line. And then these cheap or banjo feeders. And there we go. That's both rigs on and ready to go. Right, let's get fishing. I'm going to cast the cage feeder out first. I'm going to be fishing this one over to the aerator and I'm going to be fishing the method feeder probably towards the center of the lake. Now at high haze when it starts getting colder I think I've mentioned to you before the fish start moving into the middle and I think that's where they're going to be today. So we're going to start there we can always work towards ourselves if we think we need to come a little bit closer in and then what I'll do is halfway through the day I'll swap the two feeders over so we're getting a fur test. I'm probably going to start off with maggots. So species that we've got a chance to catch in today. Some really nice tension here. Some bream. Really nice eyed. F1s. Carp. Mirrors and common. And there's some really nice perch as well. Which I would love to catch one of those. Whether we've managed to get one on the feeder or not is a different story. Maybe when we swap onto worms we might have a chance at that. Right, okay. But we'll start off on the maggots. These maggots stink. Not the freshest. certainly active even though it's cold so I'm gonna go with big chunk of five maggots there I'm sure some of them will come off but that's okay and then I'm just gonna probably squash a few maggots into the cage feeder with the bread there's loose offerings And we'll cast that towards the aerator over there and I'm going to have my other one spread out like I said there's only me and my subscriber on the lake today it never gets mad busy at this time of year let's start there and we can work closer to that aerator as we go move that method feeder out the way a minute and I'm going to have to uh, bring my rod rest up a touch okay so the old cage feed is fishing let's go with an 8 mil band and wafter to start with and we can scale that down to a 6 mil if we need to if we're not picking any fish up on it my prediction is that we're probably going to get a more chance of getting an f1 or a carp or a bream using this method and on the other one we'll probably get more tension bream but we'll uh, we'll see interesting i'm not using a mold for this today i'm literally just going to squeeze some bread into it fold the hook link back over in the wafter and then squeeze some more over the top and I'll squeeze that in can't really over tighten bread into the feeder because it'll just expand on the bottom anyway so we'll not have to worry about that and it should stay on for the cast so we're going to go as close to the middle of the lake as we can that'll do 
I'll be happy with that. Now, I'm not going to be scared about leaving these in. 30, 40 minutes of cast today. I don't think we'll have to recast any more often than that. And that's the setup right there. Rods have been in 10, 15 minutes now. Not seen any kind of indications on the tips as of yet, which you would expect at this time of year anyway. Usually if I get a take, it'll just get ripped round. Even with a bream or a, an eyed or whatever, it's still going to pull the tip right round. With the cage feeder, I will have to strike into the fish. It's not going to self-hook like it would on the method feeder. This is the first day of this year where I felt like I could do with a pair of gloves. <laughs> Let's see how big these worms are. Hopefully they're not too big. I know, they're great. I might even try a worm next cast. Or half a worm. Not expecting to catch loads of fish today. I'll be happy with an handful to be quite honest with you. I'll give it another five minutes and then I'll have a recast. Maggots are still on. What they like. Oh, it's still moving, I'm not going to change them. Plenty of bread feed in there, I'm not scared about overfeeding with bread. Let's try and get a little bit closer to that aerator over there. Try not to hook my brolly when I cast. That's much better that. I'm just going to gently tighten up to that. Recast the method feeder as well. Try and get it in roughly the same place. No point clipping up. If anything, I like to move it about at this time of year. Until I find where the fish are. So what I'll do is now, I'll set a timer for half an hour and then recast and then keep doing that until we get a fish. So quickly the setup that I'm using today, using my Shimano Speedmasters, they're a nice soft short feeder rod that are perfect for commercials and Daiwa Crossfire 4000 reels. So a couple of you have been asking about this rear arm that I use for my rod book grips. If you google Maver double arm it should come up with these. Now, a couple of manufacturers do them. It's not just Maver, but um, that's just the one that I use. And I think they're actually for pole socks. <laughs> so I don't actually think they're for rod butt holders, but that's what I use it for and it works great. Obviously the uh, attachment fits onto my feeder chair, which is ideal. And it just allows me to fish double feeders like this. Very, very slim chance of getting a double hook up at this time of year. But if I did, I'd manage it. <laughs> if we haven't caught anything by like 12 o'clock, I will swap onto the float just so we get a few fish for you. <laughs> so I've had my rods out about an hour now. Still haven't had anything. Getting a feeling today is going to be <laughs> a little bit of a struggle. But like I said, if I don't get anything fishing this way, I'll swap onto the float. And we'll see if we can pick up a couple of hide that way. I'm sure we'll get something on the float especially on the maggots. I just want to persevere until at least 12 o'clock. We're 10 o'clock now. 
and we'll continue with the test and hopefully we just pick up something because if we do pick up a, a fish on the feeders it'll be a better fish as well I'll switch you back on if we get a fish we're in on the wafter feels like it's probably going to be an F1 or a tench if it is a tench it's a decent one So I'd probably been in just over half an hour. I don't want to go mad with it. I'm not fishing mega heavy. There we go. It's an F1. Some really nice F1s in here. Keep an eye on the other rod. Let's turn my drag down on it. Nicely hooked in the bottom of the mouth. Yeah, so they get absolutely massive, the F1s in here. And you can tell it's an F1 because it hasn't got barbules and it's got this lateral line of dotted scales awesome fish this time of year I'm happy with that well save the blank as well there you go bud yeah awesome that's one to the wafters awesome can't go wrong with pink wafters save the blank many a time if I had to choose one bait that I could only use for the rest of my life it would be pink wafters let's recast this cage feeder and we'll swap onto worm Those maggots absolutely stink. So I'm just passing the worm through, twisting it on the shank, and then going back through again, which just exposes the hook point. Can you see that? And the worm ain't going to hook itself there. That's how I like to hook them. bit further away from that aerator this time there'll be definitely bream over there I've no doubt about that so just a matter of time and a bit of patience which I definitely don't have well guys it's just coming up to 12 o'clock we're still only on that one fish so the fishing's absolutely dire today. I thought we'd have a better day with fishing natural baits like worms and maggots. I honestly did think the cage feeder would pick up a few more fish, but I've not had anything on that. So I think what I'm gonna do to save the video is I'm gonna set my float rod up and we'll try for a few eyed a little bit further up in the water on the maggots. Probably use a size 16 hook with a couple of maggots on and uh, scale down the hook link as well. So I'll probably go for a five pound hook link. And we'll just see if we can pick up a few fish that way. So it's a little bit more entertaining for you all. So I'm gonna get my float rod set up in the next five minutes and uh, we'll see what we catch on that. Right, float rod's out. Just put a hook link on. Gone for five pounds to a size 16. So I'll scale him right down. It's gonna pull me depth. I 
oh my god nearly spot on there it's come a little bit shallower so we're just off bottom So we'll just be off bottom there. If we're going for hide, we don't want to be on bottom. Just going to put a couple of fine shots, a couple of number eights, just down the line. I don't want it too heavy. I want it to sink slow. Right, let's see how that sits in water. Let's go for another number six on there. We should be about right. Once we've got our maggots on, let's chuck a few out. Start getting them uh, eyed competing. Let's go up with a red and a white to start off with. that flow so that's probably been in about two minutes and we've got our first hide oh gone all right let's get a few more okay we're a fishing man you feel that yeah is that, is that you coming in doing your bit and then going? <laughs> you are. <laughs> that you coming in doing your bit and then going? Yeah. <laughs> You've had as many fish as I've had all day. Yeah, I think you get a fish every five minutes or so doing it this way. I don't think I'd have used them. I'm not really in a perch swim. Mm -hmm. I'm not really in a perch swim, it's too open. I tried over to that tree on feeder. Yeah. With worm. These them worms in that tub lasted about I don't know, about two, three weeks last time, you know. Yeah, they do last them worms. So I don't think worms do as well as maggots though. I don't think they, there's not as much movement in them as a look at the size of this gudgeon proper fish that might submit it for a world record <laughs> well it's a different species at least catch gudgeon like that all day awesome little fish Don't double maggot Let's try three, see if we get something bigger. I didn't think I'd get a gudgeon so far out from the margin. That bread flake might be drawing them in. Worm. Oh, it's going, it's going. Let's go bite that. Oh, they're going to be mad at me for swinging them in. They've obviously found the bait now. Yeah. That was yeah. pretty quick, wasn't yeah, it? In, it? Let's keep the uh, maggots going in and a bit of bread. Must be only just off bottom if I'm getting good in that. Well, I can't do more off bottom at all. Do you? Mm. They might come up for certain things.
perch. Can't feel my hands to bloody unhook it. Just about. <laughs> How did I miss that? <laughs> Right, Dad. All right, see you in a bit. My dad's just come down to see how we've been getting on. Um, been doing all right since I've been on float. I've probably had five or six of them eyed while I've been talking to my dad. That perch and that nice gudgeon as well. It is cold today, like it's cutting through my wellies. It's that cold. But I'm doing all right. I'm only fishing probably five, six foot out. Just chucking an armful of bread feed in. And an armful of maggots. Every now and again. And you never know, you might have a chance of a bigger, bigger fish moving in. That was a bite. But at least I'm active and I'm doing things rather than going mental waiting for a bite. That's why I think the best strategy through the colder months is have a rod out on a bite alarm, whether that be a method feeder or just like a carp rig, you know, into the deeper water that you can just sit and leave there. And then um, to the side, just fish float with maggots. And you never know, you might get a better fish. You might pick up on a nice perch. So I think that's the best course of action from uh, now on. <laughs> comes in and tells me where I'm going wrong and then buggers off <laughs> in case you're wondering what rod I'm using it's a Drennan Series 7 13 foot cart waggler I've had it years and years so even the float's gone quiet now so what I'm going to do I think for the last hour or so of fishing I'm going to go back onto the feeders and we'll continue the challenge I've had a bit of fun with the float and we've had a few different species so we've done all right with that and uh, at least i've caught a few fish for you but i'm going to go back onto the feeders and see if we can get something a little bit better okay let's get the old method feeder back out that cast just where I want to be right. Now we've uh, not got a float rod in our hands. My feet are freezing in these wellies. Freezing. I've not put my uh, thermal socks on because I don't think it'd be that cold. But turns out it is. Just had a little bit of a drop back on this right hand rod. This is a pink wafter again. Does shows you, I think that is pretty definitive that um, wafters real. <laughs> Especially the pink ones. And I've got a worm out on this one. Natural baits. One under the other line. Look. Probably not another one of them F ones. Yeah, it is. Better one than last time. You just got to leave it in the right amount of time for them to uh, 
find the wafter because when they see it they'll take it lovely air on that one let's take a look at it on the mat you definitely definitely can't argue with these for f1s look at how fat it is hold on turn me drag down this football shaped f1 guys proper chunk awesome fish look at that again no barbie walls and that lateral line of scales for the beginners out there that's how you tell the difference between an f1 and a common look at that look how deep bodied it is lovely fat late autumn f1 let's get it back and see if we can get another one but so far the wafters are winning I'm pleased with that not turning into such a bad day it's amazing how a couple of them fish can uh, make you feel like you're having a better day <laughs> I'll keep with the six mils. So I'm literally just moving it around on that center line. So again that was in probably 30 minutes before it went round. Fingers crossed we actually get a fish on the, uh, the maggots and worms. Absolutely awesome meeting one of my subscribers today. If you do see us on the bank, don't be shy. Come and say hello, it doesn't matter if I'm filming. You guys are more important than that. And it's nice to have a chat. I know a lot of you fish a lot of the same places as I do. So it was only a matter of time before I ran into somebody. Probably the last cast this before I've got to pack up. Well, you'll have to let me know, guys. Are there any good uh, winter fisheries in the Lancashire area that you know about? Um, is there anywhere that you like to fish at this time of year where you know that you're going to catch year round? Obviously, I know the fishing's going to slow up everywhere and it's never going to be full on. But where do you like to fish? Just leave a comment down below of your favourite fisheries and why. You know, is a decent bream in there? Are you still catching the carp? You know, where's your favourite? I think the best places to fish during the winter months are the deeper ones. Well, folks, I'm going to call it a day there and get packed up. Wafters and method feeders won our little challenge today. It's safe to say that it's still an effective method at this time of year. You're leaving it longer between casts but even the natural baits today haven't been productive we had a few on the float which is to be expected you're always going to catch small fish when you're fishing float with maggots help oh I missed it i think unless it's just oh we missed our only we missed our bite on the uh the maggots on the feeder that's the first bite i've had on it all day <laughs> always when I'm doing an outro always Ugh. let's get it back out well I've just had a little bit of a recast while I'm doing my outro <laughs> as I was saying you're always going to expect to catch smaller fish when you're fishing a float that's why I always bring it at this time of year if it's really bad and you're really not catching anything always bring maggots with you and always bring your float rod because you can just pick a few off uh, while you're waiting for bites on your other rods if you even wanted to you know you could always have a method feeder out and put it on a bite alarm to the side and fish float that's the best of both worlds because then you've got a chance of getting you know a carp or something or a decent bream on the method feeder um, and you're entertaining yourself fishing on a float 
catching smaller fish with the chance that he could catch a bigger fish at some point through the day on the float. You know, it only needs a carp to move in and uh, start feeding on the maggots or you might pick up a decent perch. A lot of these commercials, are, they're pretty untapped in terms of perch fishing. If you find a commercial fishery that's well stocked with small eyed like this one, the perch can get really big. They're not really targeted. So if you come with some worms or prawns and you fish near snags or trees, you know, you have a chance of catching something decent. So I just want to say, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've managed to wangle a few out, even though it's a cold November day. And I look forward to seeing you in the next Westies Angling.